Hi guys, it's Chris Anderson here, back for another match with Devin Kepke. We're playing... Devin's got a little bit of a different deck this time. I'm still playing the same deck that uh, I used in Baltimore, and he's playing a deck that's more set up around the werewolves. He's got three uh, Dust Watch recruiters, and he's got four... Um, pacifists in his deck now. Uh, he's also got uh, Tamios instead of Abyssins because there aren't any more Selfless Spirits in his deck. So we're going to give this a try and hopefully he's going to be on to something. But, uh, this is basically how we're going to test new things. So hopefully let's learn some stuff. Uh, this hand is not acceptable. We need to hit our land drops and we're not doing that right now. Well, we're certainly hitting our land drops. I don't think I can keep this either. Okay, this is a pretty good five card hand. And I'll keep that as well. At least we're on the draw. Normally that's not a good thing, but since we're on the mold of five, we can reclaim a little bit of our card disadvantage. So we need to fetch blue here, of course, so that we can play our spell color and reflect mage on turn three. It looks like that he's doing the same. Hmm. Now, do we want to be putting the spell color out there first? I think we do, actually. I like it as a turn two play just a little bit better because I'd rather have it get reflector maged. It has flying, so I can just get through this kind of stuff. And sandbagging the Sylvan Advocate till later is kind of nice because it allows us to have it in play for a little less time in order to get Jaboka's Command out. We want this guy in play by the time we hit our sixth lane. All right, so we got a little bit of initiative here, which is pretty good. He doesn't have a play. Probably a Bounded Crassus, possibly a spell color. Get in our lands. This is good. I'm going to go ahead and attack and I'm going to spell color whatever three drop he puts down. Now the Crassus, I don't think so. All right, here comes Reflector Mage. So our spell color is going back to our hand. And then he's going to get access to that Bounded Crassus again. But overall, that's not that bad. Do far worse things than uh, reflect, when Reflector Maging a spell color. We still have the Aerial Advantage here. We have another spell color that we'll be able to use. I think I'm going to go ahead and just double spell this turn. Although putting Athalia down seems pretty great when he missed his land drop. I like to be mana efficient if I can. Also, because he's got so many flash creatures in his deck, having a werewolf in play is pretty nice, because in order for him to just pass the turn up, to so play maybe a collected company on our turn, or a spell queller on our turn, or even a bounded process on our turn, he's going to be forced to flip over our cracker point holler, which is great. Uh, well, it looks like he's going to be Dramokus commanding our selfish spirit. I'll get rid of that thing. It's gone. My graveyard back over there. It's done doing anything. And he can't attack because all our creatures are indestructible. It's pretty good. And once again, he missed his land draw. So we've got a couple options here. I think the best of which is just going to be playing Thalia. And then just pass the turn. 
attacks with Reflector Mage, I'm just going to go ahead and let it go through. I'll take the three and then crack back on my turn with Thalia and hopefully still an advocate once we get to six land. He's got a one turn window to get his fourth land. And there's a good chance it's coming in to play tapped as a Thalia. Another Dramokus command, that's pretty good. I guess I let that through. But he can't really attack, because then he's trading his 4-4 for my 2-3. Now I will activate Evolving Wilds. It doesn't really matter what I get. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the Flames, just because of Nyssa. And it'll be my turn. And hey, there we go. Got that Sylvan Advocate. And I'm going to activate Dust Watch Recruiter here. That's, that's a good uh, couple of options. I think Reflector Mage is going to be the better one. But Sylvan Advocate is great as well. You know, actually, I'm going to take the Sylvan Advocate. This allows me to keep the pressure on. I get to attack with Sylvan Advocate here, trade his Bounding Crassus for my Sylvan Advocate. So he'll probably double block. Normally, that wouldn't be the best. But this is going to be fine because I can just replace my Sylvan Advocate. But the question is let's see. Nope, no question. I want to flip my Dust Watch Recruiter here. Now I get to Spell Queller, whatever it is that he plays. And then on my turn, I'll be able to cast Sylvan Advocate for one, which gives me just enough mana to activate Lumbering Falls as well. So it's as if my Sylvan Advocate's bonus had haste. Lampful Pacifist, get out of my game. And now I'm going to get to attack him for seven. Cracking Horde Fowler is a pretty powerful mech. Once again, this is the damage that missing your land drops is going to do to you. Basically, the person who doesn't get to six lands in game one, they're dead. In almost any game, if they don't get to six lands, they're in big trouble. So 26 lands is one of the most important things, uh, the, the most important updates to the band company deck that happened last weekend in Baltimore. All right, we win. Unfortunately for Devin, he really didn't have much of a chance in that game just because he wasn't hitting his land. Which is Probably the most unfortunate thing about the mirror match. Luckily, everything else about it is pretty great. I think I'm going to have the same sort of game plan. Uh, this game plan is even more potent when you're on the play as opposed to the draw. Uh, the reason being because when you're playing your matches, uh, you can oftentimes go to time, uh, especially in paper magic. In Magic Online, since they have the chess clock set up, it's not going to be nearly as bad. So as long as you make sure you're playing quickly, you're going to be fine. But in paper, if you're down a game, sometimes it can be really rough uh, because you just won't have enough time to play two Tragic Arrogance type games in the time allotted, especially if the game one took a while. You have to take a more aggressive slanted role, especially in game three, maybe if you got like five to ten minutes left in the round. And you're forced to do this Lambholt pacifist thing that uh, isn't the best. It can get there sometimes, though. So we're going to be taking out our companies. We're going to take out our Thalias. And there's nothing wrong with Thalia, especially in game one. Thalia is actually quite good. But in post-board games, the game is about tragic arrogance. The games are expected to go very long. And Thalia gets a bit outclassed. So I'm fine with boarding her out in favor of things like Tireless Tracker and Nyssa, which allow me to get lots of massive card advantage over a long game. So Devin's going to be on the play. I'd like to point out that I like Devin's taste in Magic Online avatars. Enter the Hydra is one of my favorites. <laughs> and uh, this hand's pretty great. It's got Tragic Arrogance. It's got Tamio. I can cast things on curve. I'm not sure if I'm going to be 
casting Dust Black Recruiter on turn two, though. Because it, it, it all depends on what I draw here. Another tragic arrogance. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and play Lumbering Falls on turn one. That's the turn. Next turn, if I get another basic, I'll go ahead and play the basic and get to curve out Dust Box Recruiter. If I don't, I think I like just playing Prairie Stream. Yep, Prairie Stream it is. Next turn, I'll be able to cast Nissa, and then I'll have turn 14 again. A tracker, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's a bit unfortunate. Let's go ahead and put the planes into play. And we'll cast Nissa. And we'll get a forest. So next turn, we're going to have access to Tamiyo if we so wish. We also have the action of uh, playing Dust Rock Recruiter and Dramatic Command. But that tireless tracker unopposed is going to be pretty strong until we are able to cast Retro Garrigans. Our turn. And look for that forest. Let's see here. I think our best bet is just to cast a Squatch Recruiter. And hopefully he'll play a spell color here. That would be actually pretty great. An Ojitize command, that's also good. For him. Um, counter a creature and draw a card. Okay, goodbye to Spot Recruiter. So I have a couple of options here. Not many that I like, I will say that. I don't really want to trade my Dramotus Command and my Nissa for his Tireless Tracker right now. I can go ahead and get it swept up in the Tragic Arrogance later on in this game. And this is really, really valuable. I'd like this to turn into a Planeswalker if I can. Also, he might be the one who wants to cast Tragic Arrogance. And if so, or not Tragic Arrogance, Dramotus Command. And if he does try to Dramotus Command my Nissa, then I can just promote this command back and we'll trade the whole board. And while I'll lose my Nissa, at least I'll get a two for two instead of a two for one. And there's his Tamiyo. He's going to be plusing his. Okay, that's fine. However, he can't really. Well, it looks like he's going to attack, but that is an aggressive attack. He'll draw a couple of cards, but he's going to lose his Tamiyo to my Lumbering Falls. Our turn. We'll go ahead and put Canopy Vista down. Comes into play on tap. And we're losing our turn to do this. And he's going to get to draw a card to replace it, but getting Tamiyo off the field is a big deal. Three Tragic Arrogance. Maybe we could have used some of these from our last match. All right, more clues. Doesn't look like he has another Tamiyo. He's got no play at all, in fact. Perhaps he's going to just stock up on cards with those clues. Well, I'm not thrilled about this Tamiyo. And then the gate, yep, that'll do it. This tireless tracker is doing a really good job of playing around our tragic arrogances because it's just not what any other creatures have played. 
is unfortunate. Bounded Crassus. Okay. And now this is one, two, three, four, five, three, seven, eight, nine. That's gonna put us down to precarious two life. But in order to do that, he's going to have to completely tap out. Another Tamiya, wow. Okay. Here comes the creatures. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get to Ding Tamiya, too. Then, well, we'll see. He has a Reflector Mage, then I might just be dead here. Yep, there's Reflector Mage. Things aren't looking good. Well, this was a very strange game, one in which Tragic Arrogance actually backfired on us. Having, having three of them made it so that we really didn't have access to any other game plan. And he was able to punish us for that, because he just kept his one tracker, and the game ten, ended up being about Tamiya. So this is kind of neat. It was uh, a way for him to not really overload the board with many things. But I'm not so sure how valuable this game plan is unless he's holding tragic also, in which case it, it does seem pretty good because my, I didn't have the opportunity to overload him with any creatures because my hand was loaded with tragics myself. Um, not really much of an option here. I'm gonna have to cast that. Keep reflector, keep Tamiya, keep one of his four clues. Um, triggers and I'm gonna go ahead and play Dustwatch Retreater as a chunk blocker. Not looking very good. He has any removal spell here we're just done for. Oh yeah we're just done for. I forgot he has that ability. It's the first time he's used it so okay uh, let's see if we want to make any changes. I don't think so. I like the way things are I believe. Let's get another go. I'll go ahead and play first this game. This is a pretty good hand. Gonna get the curve out. Gonna get a tracker going. Self the spirit to pressure his Tanios. Start things off with the Lumbering Falls, because they can play tapped. And we got a Tragic Arrogance, so that's kind of nice. Good ace up my sleeve to have. So the question is, do I want to put Dustwatch Recruiter into play or Selfless Spirit? I think Selfless Spirit is the one. Okay. Perhaps I was wrong. Um, let's go ahead and put the dust watch down now. Yes. Play that one morning falls and attack him for two. A declaration in stone? Okay. That is Deese. Put that Evolving Wilds into play, get a clue, sack, get more clues. Lots of clues. Oh, that was wrong. I meant to get a planes there. Oh well. Hopefully we're not gonna get punished too hard by that. I want to 
family can't because of my drug experience. Okay. And that's fine. Um, that's not really going to do very much for him, actually, because of our Lumbering Falls. Lumbering Falls is actually a really good way to fight this land. Go ahead and uh, I like tapping the Lumbering Falls for blue first. That way one is tapped and one is untapped. It's a really good way to make sure that you don't accidentally activate the one that you tap for mana on Magic Online. And we pass the turn. So sometimes Tamiya just does that. In which case, you're spending a lot of mana to get not very much value. Okay, that's actually really strong for him. Because we have a, a second tracker in our hand and now we can't play it. But we will be able to draw a bunch of cards. We're going to be up a lot on him. Sack a clue, sack a clue, and no land, that's too bad. But we do have seven cards. And if he wants to overdevelop at this point, then we've got the trash gear against the punch for it. Well, maybe. We're gonna need to draw white source first, of course. Play tireless tracker. That's going to come into play. Attack with Selfless Spirit. And under normal circumstances, I would like... Oh, he does have Addison in his deck. Interesting. Okay. So here's what we're going to do here. Oh no, Jamoka's Command. Yeah, we, we're getting punished very hard for this. Um, actually, no, I'm just stupid. That's mostly it. Um, I had no reason to tap that uh, planes when I cast my Tyrant's Tracker, but I decided to because I was being careless. And now I'm gonna get punished for it. That's okay. And that's one of the things that just makes this matchup so awesome. Miss a land again? <laughs> oh my. Yes, I will discard a tracker. Well, I sure went through a lot of clues not to get that land. I guess getting appropriately punished for not getting flames with Evolving Wilds is the second thing. This is the second time that uh, that didn't work out for us. Um, I'm actually going to block here. Our tracker can have four toughness. So I've got a couple of options right now. I can just try to go ahead and promote this command sky. He's got a spell color, he's got a spell color. You know what? He's got a spell color and it dies. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and drum up this command this guy. He could negate it, but that's not that bad. All right, that's pretty great actually. So now it's our turn. Still no mana. And 
I think I'm just going to pass the turn. Any flash creature that he could play at this point would be a very good way for him to just kill my tracker. And it's a really strong creature right now. I don't want it to die. Um, well, all of these cards are good. Let's get rid of... Well, how about another tracker? Maybe it was supposed to be Tameo, but I don't think so. So now it's a main phase. Okay. Duskwatcher Creator's pretty good. Doesn't have any trackers. All right, our turn. Now we can put the pressure on him. Still no mana. Uh, well, we have a few options here. We can only play one blue spell. I think what I want to do is play Tamiya. If it resolves, which I don't think he has negate, because if he had negate, I think he would have used it on Tremokus command. Now, if we can plus here. Actually, no, that isn't a very strong play because of uh, rounded Crassus, but luckily he didn't have one. We did not get punished for it. You could tap our tracker. I wouldn't get to draw a card with it. And uh, attack back Tamio for five. All right, I draw a card. Still no land. I'll go ahead and get rid of that second tragic arrogance. I don't really need it. And I can't cast it. Wow, he's hit two Duskwatch repeaters and wiped on both of them. Okay. Well, goodbye, Tracker. That's fine. We get to draw another card. Still no land. Hey, there's a land. Finally. Okay. Not a white land, though. So we still don't have the ability to... Oh, let's see here. Cast a lot of our cards. <laughs> So negate is the only card in our entire hand that we can cast as the second spell of our turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Reflector Mage. I'm going to put that Duskwatcher Creator back to his hand, and then I'm going to plus my Tamiya. Both Reflectors. And it's his turn. And once again, I'll have to discard. Mm -hmm. This time, I think I'm going to go ahead and pitch Atheston. What a strange game. Jamoka's command? I don't think so. At least this coming turn, Tracker will be able to come into play. So we're going to be able to two spell whether we get that second light source or not. Bound to Crassus, okay. So we can tap our reflector if he wishes, which is fine with me, because I'm okay with him attacking my Tamiya. This means I get to draw a card. And, all right, we got another mana. Still not a white source though. 
let's go ahead and put tireless tracker into play so I can start grabbing some clues when I make my land drop. Next, I think, let's see. I think Jermokas command is gonna be the way to go here. Fight there, go ahead and gloss on both reflectors. This will let me pressure him, draw a card, and next turn, if he wants to attack my Tamiyo again, I get to draw another card. I get access to a clue right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this now so that he can't do something like a Dramokas command in response. If he wants to Dramokas command, he can, but this guy's gonna die. And hey, there's that second white source, finally. We got punished pretty hard for not fetching earlier, but you know, Tamiya is just so strong that it doesn't really matter. And we win. All right, good game, Devin.